Oh yeah, it's live. All right. Welcome to Staking Mondays. My name is Marian. I'm head of BD at Staking Rewards. And today it's my pleasure to interview Sota Watanabe, founder of Astar Network. Astar Network connects the Polkadot ecosystem to Ethereum, Cosmos, and all layer one blockchains. Welcome, Sota. Yeah, thank you very much for having me today. I'm super excited to be here and I'm a big fan of the, you, know, you and your podcast. Great. Let's jump right in. Yesterday morning, you had to communicate Astra Network's response to the Akala USD exploit. What happened there and how did it affect Astra? Could you walk us through that, please? Yep, of course. Uh, this is a little bit difficult uh, question because this incident is on Akala, not on Asta. And Asta and Akala are two different parachain. But uh, we have been working together with Akala, and I strongly believe that their capability to recover from the incident. And the, the problem is that um, Akala opened the channel between Interlay and Akala. And now user can bring the Bitcoin value to Akala ecosystem. And Akala issued AUSD, which is the stable coin on Polkadot, and using B Bitcoin as a collateral. But uh, unluckily, the hacker issued a lot of the AUSD by using the same bit Bitcoin, BTC. So the a more than 1.2 billion AUSD was issued on Akala with very limited the collateral. But uh, luckily, Akara found the, the bug and the network was suspended. So the impact, negative impact, and the financial loss is very small, smaller than I expected, thanks to Akara's quick response. And the Asta is a different parachain from Akala, and the user have to transfer Akala token from Akala parachain to Asta parachain. Um, we realized the problem, and within three hours, uh, we decided we evaluated potential loss and potential damage, and evaluated all options, and we executed within three hours. By the way, I was watching. It was Sunday, you know new for me and I was watching a movie called One Piece, which is one of the famous manga anime. <laughs> so I, you know, went out to the movie theater and deal with the, the, the problem. And Asta stopped uh, importing AUSD from Akara to Asta. So the hacker cannot, could not transfer AUSD to Asta network ecosystem. So meaning that we prevented uh, secondary issue or secondary hack on Asta. So it was really, the incident is always not good, but uh, it was great to see our quick response and quick in you know, the fix. So it, it was Sunday, so you know, <laughs> it was really hard, <laughs> but it was good to see a quick response of Asta. How does this emergency incident uh, respond works for you and your team how did you organize this maybe give us a a, a view behind the curtains on that yeah so we have been working with akara and we have been working together with other parachains so if there is incident on other parachain there will be a potential incident on a star so we have to monitor all the potential incidents in our Polkadot ecosystem. And the, luckily, it was new, new for me, so I made that decision. I talked with, so basically, we have a group called Asta War Room. And uh, the executive member are there and geologically distributed. So the people in the room discussed and have a consensus, at least with four people in a group. And then the leader going to execute. If I am sleeping, another executive in the US or Europe can make a decision quickly because the speed is really important to prevent further hack. So we intentionally distribute our ownership and my right to make a decision. So we can work on any hack 24 hours, seven days. Hmm. And judging from the uh, 
Twitter post that you did last morning, you were, yep. were actually able to prevent um, any, if not all, um, transfer of yep. uh, AUSD towards Asta yep. network. And by that, mitigate any uh, damage to, yes. to the value. So, exactly. So we evaluated uh, potential loss in impact on Asta. And I would say that the impact is almost zero. So, which is really, really small and smaller than other parachain. The, because our response was, I think, quickest. And we value transparency. So we had a duty to explain what's happening and how our decision, how to do it. So that's why I made a blog post on Discord and published on Discord and Twitter. Um, when incidents happen, the most important things we need to do is to prevent further FUD. I mean, mm -hmm. rumor, but rumor. Because people does not have technical knowledge and also Twitter is not always the best place to discuss. So mm -hmm. it is really important for the core team and founder to make a announcement and share the correct information. So like crisis yeah. communication is important, right? Yeah, exactly. So when we make an announcement, potentially market is going down, our price goes down maybe, but uh, what we have to stop is FUD. Hmm. And if FUD is spreaded, price going down again. So we have to, we probably we need to compromise the short term impact, but uh, we have to prevent the long term negative impact. And I think we did a great job about this. Yes, I, I do think so as well. So um, yeah. congr congratulations on that. Yeah, in, in the, Actually, the, when it comes to negative impact, um, uh, at that time, people can transfer AUC to Asta network ecosystem. And compared to other parachain, uh, I don't want to say numbers regarding the other parachain, but uh, when it comes to Asta, only two transactions we allowed from Akara to Asta. So only two address we needed to monitor. Mm -hmm. The other parachain has more than 50 or something like that. But uh, yeah, quick response in the transparency to the community are the key. Great. Maybe, so we jumped in right into the most recent uh, incident, but um, maybe for uh, listeners that are new to Aston Network, could you just briefly give us the base positioning that you chose yep. for Aston Network? Yep, so Aston Network is the future of smart contract platform for the multi-chain era. Uh, last year, 2021, the, the you know, key word was faster or maybe cheaper. But uh, next year, in 2023, I think multi-chain or cross-chain are going to the key, be the key. So we are making future of smart contract platform starting from Polkadot, but we are going to expand our ecosystem to Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, and so on. So Polkadot, when it comes to Polkadot, Polkadot has relay chain and parachain. The relay chain is the heart of the Polkadot. And the parachain is the layer one blockchain that has own logic, like smart contract chain or DeFi chain, NFT chain, and so on. And we are making smart contract parachain because Polkadot relay chain, the heart of the Polkadot, does not support smart contract by design. So all people, at least all people in the Polkadot ecosystem need smart contract parachain. And we are making smart contract parachain. Other people are also making smart contract parachain, but uh, we have two unique features. One feature is we are supporting not only Ethereum virtual machine, but also WebAssembly. Ethereum virtual machine is like Windows OS. It's widely used, but uh, it's, uh, I would say, obsolated. Mac, US, Mac OS is more sophisticated and cutting edge. This is like WebAssembly in a uh, blockchain space. Um, we are supporting both Ethereum virtual machine and WebAssembly. So we can support not only Solidity, Viper, but also JavaScript, Python, Rust, and so on. And according to Gavin Hood, the founder of Polkadot and the CTO, original CTO of the Ethereum, he mentioned that EVM is really important right now, but the future is WebAssembly. So I'm seeing this transition as well. 
So right now, it is super important to support the migration from other layer one blockchain, other EVM chain to Asa. But in the long run, we would like to see more web assembly oriented use cases. And the, another feature we have is the DAPS staking, uh, which is the basic income for developer. The most important people in a blockchain ecosystem is always developer, right? But uh, developer are paying money to contribute to the ecosystem. Like when it comes to other layer one blockchain, they have to pay gas fee hmm. when they make smart contract or they have to pay US dollar to run nodes, right? Hmm. This does not make sense because they are the most important people, developer, we have to care, but they are paying a lot of the cost. And maybe influencer or maybe shiras are getting a lot of the money. So <laughs> blockchain is all about incentive, but the incentive hmm. design here is completely broken. And we fixed, uh, we have DAPS staking, so people can stake their token, Asta token on DAPS. And DAPS developer can get basic income from block rewards based on the staking amount from the community. So the more staking DAPS can get, the more basic income they can get from block reward inflation. So by making smart contract or by making infrastructure on Asta, they can get rewarded from the community automatically and you know with decentralization. So this is pretty unique. Um, and we would like to make leading smart contract have starting from Polkadot ecosystem. And next year, I think that this is the era of the multi-chain. So we would like to be recognized as leading emerging layer one blockchain in 2023. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, it's uh, the classic developer-first approach that I think was nailed down by Stripe, right? Uh, yeah. If you if you nail it for the developers, they will wherever they build, whenever they build, they will build with you. And I think yep. allowing allowing this in a staking way is a smart way to incentivize uh, developers directly. Yep, exactly. So this is the really important things for our star network, and I think for the entire blockchain ecosystem. And uh, one thing that you mentioned and that's also very prominent uh, on your website is yep. the the future is multi-chain. So this yep. is like a core hypothesis that you have for the future. Yep. What brought yep. you to this hypothesis? What are your arguments and your data points supporting this hypothesis? Yeah, um, I think this is a super great question. So before starting blockchain, I had to consider a lot of the use cases and to think of the use cases, I learned a lot from the internet history. So before the internet, it was called intranet. And there are a bunch of the network, like you know, network at Stanford, network at uh, Berkeley, New York, Tokyo, Tokyo University, or maybe you know, the private company and so on. So it, there are a lot of the silos over the world. But right now, we can talk to each other simultaneously thanks to TCP IP protocol. Mm -hmm. And right now, internet is connected. And that's why we can say the internet. It sounds like one network. But blockchain is isolated. And there are a lot of the silo, like, you know, not only Ethereum, but also, you know, Asta, Moonbeam, um, Solana, Avalanche, and so on. So blockchain needed to be connected in a protocol level, not an application level. So if we, if application connect uh, blockchains, like it's like multi-chain strategy, right? A lot of the, a lot of the, you know, application deploy exactly the same contract on Ethereum and others. Mm. But uh, the problem is the liquidity and total value locked are also isolated. So if Uniswap is on Ethereum, which is great and very sophisticated, and there are a lot of the total value locked here. But if they deploy the Uniswap code on other layer one blockchain, they have to make total value locked from scratch. Mm -hmm. Right? So liquidity is very isolated. This is not the future. So in the future, protocol will be connected. And application on Asta can use Ethereum total value locked and liquidity seamlessly. Then 
application can enjoy multi-chain future. I think this is my future's vision. And, um, and internet has exactly almost the same history to the blockchain. And internet is connected right now. So blockchain will be connected just like internet in coming years. And I would like to make one of the fundamental protocol to, to connect their own blockchains to realize more sophisticated use case. So to remain in the analogy that you painted there, it's like right now we do have exchanges that are, mm -hmm. one is running on the Stanford intranet, next mm -hmm. one is on uh, DARPA intranet, yep. and uh, they are not connected. And what you are actually trying to achieve is that the dApps will not run on these segregated or siloed intranets, but they will yep. just connect to the blockchain, which is like yep. the internet now fully yep. uh, connected yeah right. so i think in the future user do not care about which blockchain to use they may using ethereum they may using solana they may using a star but without the, even knowing it right from a user's perspective yeah 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 from the user's perspective they don't know which blockchain to use because blockchain is connected just like internet so right now we are using internet and probably this amazon aws or microsoft azure on landing uh landing maybe in japan Maybe in the US, maybe in Europe, but I don't know and I don't care. So same experience in the future. Got it. How do you view the competition between smart contract hubs on Polkadot, like Moonbeam and others? Yep. Do you think yeah, the or... network will dominate that niche? Yeah. Um, so Moonbeam is creating ECDM compatible layer one blockchain, and we don't have any plan to make uh, ECDM, 100% ECDM compatible network. So let's say Moonbeam is 100% ECDM compatible Polkadot parachain. I would say Asta network is 70% or maybe 60% because if we optimize to the ECDM, it's going to be really hard, hard and harder for us to make more sophisticated web assembly use cases. In, so to answer your question, probably uh, Polkadot ecosystem is still too small to compete. And so we have to work with Moonbeam and maybe other smart contract platform to make ecosystem bigger. And then we can compete. And I believe that future is going to be WebAssembly smart contract. And that's why we are supporting them. And Moonbeam does not have any plan to support uh, WebAssembly. So this is going to be the killer feature. And we also have DAPS staking, which is very unique mm -hmm. in um, really sophisticated differentiator, I guess. In, in that regard, what effect do you think will the Ethereum merge have on the Polkadot ecosystem? Yep. E yeah, uh, I think to enjoy the full potential of the Ethereum, it still take, I would say, years because the merge is just the beginning of the Ethereum 2.0. Uh, Ethereum Foundation is not calling Ethereum 2.0, but mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the people just ignore the, a lot of the step after the merge. I know, I know a lot of the step, like, you know, surge, budge, splurge, <laughs> and, and others. I don't remember, but there are a lot of the steps after the merge. So right now I feel that um, people over-evaluate the merge. Mm. But the, the merge is not everything, just a part of the update. So probably it takes another years, years to complete the Ethereum update. So meanwhile, uh, a lot of the layer one blockchain will be flourished. So there will be a strong need to connect the blockchain still. I don't think Ethereum are going to dominate all the blockchain ecosystem. Do you then intend to integrate other ecosystems as well later on? Yes, yes. So we are going to integrate a lot of the ecosystem, um, like Ethereum, Polygon, Binance, Binance Smart Chain, uh, Solana, Avalanche, and so on. Because um, we would like to make multi-chain future. And I think it is not possible for Asta to make another ECDM. So connecting blockchain makes sense a lot for us. Right. Then on the dApp staking. Uh, so on staking rewards, 
users come to us often to find assets, um, find out the yields that they pay out, and then buy into the assets, stake the assets, and um, later on find the yep. right validators to stake with. Maybe from the perspective of an investor, uh, could you could you pitch us the DAP staking from for an investor's perspective? Yeah, investor's perspective. Got it. So if investor has Asta token, there are a lot of the way to use Asta. So one of the the securest ways uh, using DAP staking. So investor lock Asta token on their own account, and then they can use DAP staking. This means that user is not transferring the token from A account to B account. So they are trans locking token, their own account, which means it is extremely safe. And they're using DAP staking. So DAP staking is security is the most important thing, especially for whales, right? So DAP staking is really ideal way to earn staking. And we also have a creator proof of stake. So people can make note and run creator on Asta network. And right now it is not possible to make nominated proof of stake. So people cannot use their token for staking on creator because Polkadot does not support nominated, sorry, Polkadot parachain does not support nominated proof of stake. But in the future, we are going to support nominated proof of stake and token holder can stake their token on creator so that they can get uh, staking rewards. But the DAP staking is the best way. And the last way is using DeFi or maybe using NFT on a star. Where, please walk us through the economics of it. Where does the value come from that you as a DAP staker earn? Yep. Yeah, so, so we do have really unique token economics. So let's say, um, to make it clear, to make it easy. So let's say our variation is 1 billion. Our fully diluted value is 1 billion. And we have roughly, yeah, to make it easy, 10%, 10% inflation. Then 100 million will be issued per year, right? And right now, I think 20% goes to Creator and 30% goes to Treasury and 50% goes to Developer and Staker. And we can adjust this number based on the governance. Um, and I said 50% goes to uh, DAPS creator and staker. And people can stake their token on DAPS through our portal, our product. And based on the staking amounts, so let's say your application get 100 staking amount and my application get 10 staking amounts. And then you can get 10 times bigger basic income from block rewards. So 50% of block rewards goes to community. And 40% out of that 50% goes to developer and 10% goes to staker. So by staking your token on DAX, you can get staking amounts. And by making smart contract on a star, you can get revenue. In the beauty of our token economics is the more the more dApps are created on Asta network, the more option we can stake, right? So the more dApps are created, the more tokens should be locked, logically speaking. And the more tokens are locked, there are less circulation supply in the market. But uh, since we are increasing the number of the dApps, the more utility but uh, liquidity is smaller and smaller. And price is generally decided by supply and demand. And supply is decreasing, but uh, demand is increasing. And then theoretically speaking, again, uh, price is going up because it is decided by demand and supply. And if price became double, our variation became 2 billion and we can distribute 200 million to the community. And then we can distribute more amount to the uh, developers. So probably uh, 
yeah, I, I hope you can understand our token economics. So probably it's not easy. <laughs> how would um, let's say one DAP is extremely popular and the other one is not? How is that reflected yep. in the staking behavior? Yeah, we are right now the the DAPs can dominate the basic income, but uh, I I don't think it is not fair and it is not good so we can adjust parameters right now we have a dynamic inflation so if the number of the dApps is small and we distribute a lot of the token to dApps single dApps each dApps can get a lot of the token right so we have a dynamic token economics that dynamic inflation the more the more dApps are developed on Asta, the more token will be issued and then more token will be distributed to the dApps. So, um, in probably uh, we can adjust the on-chain parameter in the future. So we would like to discuss with the community. And you can find uh, the whole documentation on dApp staking in the documents on Asta Network's website, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. In yeah, just a moment, I would like to explain our token economics a little bit. So mm -hmm. can I share my screen? Um, yeah, please try. I'm not so sure about it. Yep, yeah, uh, let me try. Uh, am I sharing my screen? No, can't see it. Now it's now it's starting. Yep. Yeah. Oh, now now it's okay, right? Yep, yeah, it's open. So yeah, this is our token economics, and this is our network effect. So all all, all value is like. It's hypothesis. It's not the other number. So please forget about you know, this number because this is not financial advice. Mm -hmm. So let's say our variation is 1 billion and we have a 10% inflation. So 100 million will be issued, right? And this, this parameter, 10%, 40%, 50% can be adjusted. So this is also an example. So 10% goes to creator, 10 million will be distributed. And 40 million goes to treasury. So 40 million goes to treasury and we can decide how to use it. Our community can decide. And 50% goes to dApps and developer and staker. And this is our product. And people can stake their token on dApps and they can get staking rewards. 10 million out of 50 million. And developer can deploy smart contract and they, their application will be listed on our portal. It's like just Apple store or maybe Google Play store. And then mm -hmm. developer can get basic income. So 40 million out of 50 million are distributed to the community and ecosystem member. Developer join our ecosystem because they can earn token. If they join other ecosystem, they have to pay the token. They have to lose the token. But they can earn token in the Astra Network ecosystem. And the more dApps are created, this is step five. The more dApps are created, the more token will be staked. And the more token are staked, the less token they are in circulation. They have less circulation, but the more demand because number of the dApps is increasing. So there is positive feedback on our variation because token price is decided by supply and demand. And our variation become 2 billion and 10% goes to 200 million. And we can distribute 100 million to the community. And we can distribute two times more amounts, the more developer comes in. And the more dApps are created, the less token in circulation, there is another positive feedback on our variation. 3 billion, 300, 4 billion, 400. So this is like our token economics. But wouldn't... Which uh, is very unique. But wouldn't developers or the others from time to time also need to unstake and then sell their tokens just to liquidate and, let's say, go back to fiat currencies to pay their bills? Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. But this is also on-chain data. So let's say if developer are selling a lot of the token, people can realize this is not the right place to stake. And then mm. they can switch the staking destination from application A to more contributing project. Got it. Um, maybe then um, on the depth staking 
uh, issue, let's say. Uh, would you like to add something more to that? Otherwise, I would uh, go over to the closing remark questions. <laughs> yeah, probably I was speaking a lot about DAX staking, but uh, I would say this is very innovative token economics, I would say, mm -hmm. regarding the in, in a layer one blockchain ecosystem. And I think developer are uh, uh, the most important people in the blockchain space, but uh, most undervaluated in terms of the financial rewards. So we do need an incentive for developers to deploy on our star. So right now, DAX staking is Work, working well, but uh, it's not fully recognized. So we would like to prove the value and improve mm -hmm. our token economics. And once we get that attention and our network became bigger, probably, uh, you know, this type of staking strategy is going to be more important. So I, we will do our best to adjust parameters mm -hmm. for entire sustainable blockchain ecosystem growth. Yeah, and I think um, the staking Mondays are exactly the right medium to get more attention on yep. the DAP staking yep. on Asta network. Exactly. Then what was the last big learning for you in crypto? So let's say, when did you last <laughs> change your mind on a thing? In uh, anything, not anything. only tech, but also anything, right? Anything, so, yep. yeah. Yeah, um, I think... The most important things for the crypto entrepreneur is to humble and to be really serious for the you know product growth and also people have to make community driven project because the value of the WebC project comes from community, not comes from very single entity or just core team. So blockchain values, WebC project value comes from uh, you know community. Hmm. Uh, probably I would like to I would like to emphasize the first one. So project need to be humble. So in in the crypto space, people are getting rich really quick. So sometimes people think that they can um, a lot of the money because he or she is wise. But uh, actually, they can get a lot of the money because the market is going up. Mm -hmm. you know, some, some people have very you know, talent and they can earn money by themselves, thanks to them. But uh, generally speaking, market is going up and that's mm -hmm. why we can be successful. So your project needed to be humble and people, entrepreneurs have to think of community and how to contribute to the world and how to make the world a better place. So this is the most important mindset I learned. Um, unfortunately, we had a lot of the example, bad example, right? Mm -hmm. I don't mention the specific name, but the founder became you know, very eager yeah. or maybe selfish. Project always die. Mm -hmm. So one thing I, I learned in the industry is people need to be humble to make really sustainable use case. Yeah, I think this is very well emphasized already a couple of years ago by Nassim Taleb in Food by Randomness, where he always saw yep. that uh, people were attributing the success that they had in the market really purely by randomness to themselves and yep. their skill. And it's just a matter of time until they actually um, land on their belly, so to say. Yep. Uh, and he saw exactly. that over and over again. Exactly. So what I would like to do in the coming years is probably uh, I would like to make Asta Network very successful and I'm not satisfied with the current situation of the Polkadot and also Asta at all. So I have to work more and really be serious. But the, at the same time, I would like to be humble and I would like to make the world a better place. So from the next year, probably... Uh, Asta is going to be carbon negative and also I would like to use my fund and probably Asta's treasury for social goods. Maybe planting woods or in a charity and so on. Interesting. And uh, what's the best places to keep up with these developments? Could you just plug your... Yep. your uh, cool. So I think 
Yeah, Twitter is the best place, and we have three hundred to twenty more than three hundred twenty six k followers on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is like more general content, and the if you if you have any question or technical question or very you know. Talk economics question and so on. Please feel free to join our Discord. So I'm always there, and our community manager always there. So we are very happy to answer any question except for price. Um, and we have documentation. So if you'd like to learn more about technical things, so please see the document documents like docs dot asta dot network. And if you are in the US or Singapore or Japan. Or Berlin, um, we are going to have a lot of the meetup and we are going to organize meetups like Token Twenty Forty Nine in San Francisco Blockchain Week and so on. So I'm really excited to see you guys in person and discuss the future of the Asta and future of the Polkadot and the future of Web Three. Perfect. There you have it. Thank you very much, Sota. To Amazing. everyone watching, thank you very much. Please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel uh, and check out our previous episodes of Staking Mondays here available on YouTube and Spotify. Let us know who you would like to see next on Staking Mondays as well. For Sota in the audience, I'm Marian. As always, happy staking. Thank you. <laughs>